Hi everybody, this is Sophia Nelson, author of The Woman Code and your master class teacher, of course, for Club Woman Code. As we come to the end of 2018, yes, can you believe we are just 45 days out from the end of the year 2018. I hope that everybody had an amazing Thanksgiving. I know that I ate way too much turkey and definitely OD'd on sweet potato pie. For those of you that don't know what sweet potato pie is, you gotta have some. Pumpkin pie is good, apple pie is real good, but sweet potato pie, that's next level. I hope that you guys took some time over this weekend to actually rest because the holiday season is upon us. And then guess what? It's New Year's. Now, as you know, every year I talk to you about getting ready for your next year now. If you've never been to my Now to Next Woman vertical, you should go. Check us out on Twitter at Now to Next Woman. And we have a website, now to next woman com. I think it's dot com. It might be dot org, but check both. My apologies for not knowing, but I want to be authentic when I talk to you. So I don't want it to be canned and I want to be real in these videos and in these master classes. But I really need you now to get those journals, to talk into your microphone, whatever you do to help encourage yourself, to spur you to get things done, to write down that list. I need you to start now. It is post Thanksgiving. Black Friday has come and gone. This is your November master class. There's going to be one more in 2018. And I'm trying to work to make that a live audio and video class with our Club Woman Code members, but also open it up to everybody as we did back in April when we had our last Club Woman Code master class series with some guests. And it was my intention this year to do more of that. But as one human being with a very small team and speaking and TV and books and everything that I do, I need to make sure that no matter what, you're hearing from me at least once a month and that we're setting you up for a great win next year. Some of you have already renewed your 2019 subscriptions. Remember, if you get three friends to sign up to Club Woman Code, just send me their receipts. And guess what? Yours is free for the year. It's worth it. Share this. Don't keep it to yourself. Ladies who are in my connect group in Northern Virginia, you need to be signed up for Club Woman Code too. I've been giving you these videos as a gift, but I need you to sign up. I need you to join and I need you to share it with your friends because it's that one time a month that you're going to get a message. You can sit down with your coffee, your tea, your glass of wine, whatever it is. Take notes and really reflect with your Woman Code books on the principles. So today I'm going to do something a little different. Our master class today is specifically designed, ladies, and gentlemen who take this course is specifically designed to make you get rid of what I'm going to call some garbage that I need you to throw away for 2019. There are seven things I'm going to ask you to begin to look at, think about, and get rid of as we head into the new year. You ready? Get your pens, get your iPads, however you take notes, journal this because it's important. All right. Seven things that I want you to get rid of and throw out in 2018, well before you get to January 2019, okay? Write these down. Number one, the number one thing I want, and I'm talking to me, the number one thing that I want you to get rid of is holding grudges. Get rid of grudges. Get rid of unforgiveness. I'm working on it. It's hard when people have hurt us to our core, when they've taken from us, when they've disrespected us, they've dishonored us, particularly when we've been good to them. And it hurts, it festers, we get angry, and we hold a grudge. But the truth is, the prisoner that's being held by the grudge isn't them, it's you. Most people don't know that you have a grudge and others don't care. And that includes your family, which we're going to get to in a minute. So the number one thing I want you to get rid of is grudges. Get rid of those grudges. Number two, fake friends. I did a post the other day on Instagram that was very popular. And the post went something like this. Get rid of people who kind of like you. Very simple. But we all have people like that in our row who are friends, but they're on the periphery. But they're not really friends. They don't celebrate us. They don't connect with us. They kind of watch what we do. They really don't like us, but they really don't want to disconnect because they actually admire us and they actually want to keep getting what we have to say 
but they got a love hate thing going on. They kind of sort of like you. So they're really fake friends. They're not in your corner. They're not for you. And you already know who they are. You know, you know, and you don't want to know. I've been there and it's tough, but I've gotten to a place of maturity in my life where even if it's my family, if you're not for me and you're always talking bad about me behind my back and you're always digging at me or you always get a snide remark or, or something on my social media, I can't use you and I can't be around you. And we just don't need to be connected because I've got some great friends and I've got a great row and I have people who love me, as do you. Focus on those people. That's who you want to be around. Number three, the number three thing you want to get rid of, bad habits. Get rid of those bad habits. They will break you. Habits become your character. We talked about this last month when we went through the choose your thoughts and words wisely woman code, right? And in this code, in this November masterclass, as I'm telling you to get rid of things, what I'm really telling you to do is code number 20, which is reconnect with yourself and reconnect into those things that are positive and good and lovely and noble as the word says meditate on these things that are good for you get rid of bad habits the smoking the cursing the drinking the sexing the 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 pornography addiction that you're hiding, the 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 lion, the, the the negativity, the bad attitude, whatever ugly bad habit you got, you know what it is. Check it, check it, put it in a bag, and let's throw it away. And let's at least work on it before we get to January. The next one, number four, rid your life of anyone or anything that is toxic to your soul, that leaves a residue, that makes you angry, that makes you sick, that makes you you out of control, whatever that thing is, and you know what it is, it's toxic, it's toxic language, it's toxic words, it's toxic memories, it's toxic tapes from your childhood, it's the family member who's always digging at you, who only calls you when they need something, but they use you, and then they talk bad about you, whatever it is, get rid of it, if it's toxic, you can't use it, boo, get rid of it, the next thing, the number five thing, this is big, Get rid of exes in your life. Look, I've said this to you many times before. You can't be friends with people that you used to be involved with. I know some of you want to be. Now, if you've got kids and you've been married, that's different. You have kids. You and your ex-wife, you and your ex-husband, y'all need to learn how to be civil for your children. And you also better not be talking bad about that ex to your kids because that's their dad and that's their mom and they need something better from you than that. But exes, you can't be friends with the guy you used to sleep with, girl. You can't be friends with him while he's got another woman and you're still pining after him and you still want him. Stop stalking his social media. Stop looking at what he does. When my ex and I broke up a couple years ago now, I immediately disconnected from social media. I didn't block because I didn't feel the need to block him from looking at my stuff if he wanted to, but I cut myself off. I couldn't tell you what he's doing, where he's at, whatever. I recently heard he got married. You know what? I wish him well. I hope it's wonderful. I hope they're happy together. I hope they have every blessing that God can give them. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart, but I'm not connected into his social media. I'm not looking at his stuff. I, when I cut it off, I had to make a decision. I couldn't be friends. We couldn't still text. We couldn't still email. We couldn't hang out. That is not good for your soul. And it keeps you from moving forward to the next person that you need to be with, who's going to love you, who you're going to love, who you're going to start a new life with. Get rid of exes. Stop stalking people. Stop being concerned about what is behind you and who is behind you. It's not good for you. Number six, get rid of doubt. You know, I was in the store the other day and I saw a quote from Peter Pan, one of my favorite childhood stories and a great movie if you've never watched it. And you should find the little kid in you every once in a while. And Peter Pan is a great quote that goes something like this. It says, if you don't believe you can fly, you never will. Of course, we know Peter Pan was able to fly because he believed that he could. He believed in the magic. Well, we got to start believing in the magic again. We have to start believing in God again. We have to start believing in us again. We have to start believing in the possible again, in love again. 
in good people again, in good things again. I know the culture's toxic. I know we're mean and nasty and unkind, and that's who we are every day. And it makes you fearful, and it makes you doubt, and it makes you wonder, are there any good people out there? On Thanksgiving Day, you know, after everybody ate, we were sitting down at the dining room table, and we were all talking, all grown folks, about dating and love and marriage and relationships and how so many good people have stopped dating. They've taken themselves out the game, they go home, they watch TV, they eat pizza, they have wine, they hang out with their friends because they're afraid of love. I've been there. I don't know how many of you have been there, but I've been there. And it's not a good place to be. But you're afraid, you have doubts that there's somebody kind, that there's somebody good. Well, there is. And you've got to start believing that again for 2019. The last thing that I want you to get rid of, the last thing, and this is a hard one, and I'm going to bowl down some alleys and step on some toes. you got to get rid of fake family members. Ooh, Sophia, what did you say? Well, listen to me. Just because we have the same blood and the same DNA doesn't mean we're going to like each other. It doesn't mean we should be in each other's space. It doesn't mean that we're going to get along. Now, if this is your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your kid, your spouse, that's a different ballgame. Those are the people closest to you and, of course, your grandparents, your aunts and your uncles. Your immediate family are people that you're going to see. They're people that you want to see. They're people that you want to have a good relationship. They're people that you want the best for, you want to honor, you want them to honor you. But sometimes the family's so toxic and so dysfunctional that we get to a place where we simply can't get along. Let me suggest a few things because I've been there and am there. Sometimes the wounds are too deep. Sometimes the hurt has been buried too long. Sometimes the neglect, the disrespect, whatever it is, has become so monumental and so big that we don't know how to unpack it. Well, there are ways to unpack it. Pack it. Number one, if you can, get into counseling. If you're married and your marriage has had difficult patches, know that your kids have been affected. If you've been an alcoholic, if you've had an addiction, if you've been an abuser, your kids have been affected. And if they don't get help and you guys don't try to heal and talk it out, they're going to be 50 years old walking around wounded still. And they will have wounded their kids. And their kids are going to wound their kids. And the curse is going to generationally keep going and going and going unless somebody stands up in the lineage, like the Bible says, and becomes the right person and becomes the godly person and becomes the one that is humble and becomes the one that loves despite the rancor and becomes the one that covers and becomes the one that says we need help and becomes the one that says let's talk about it let's get somebody who we trust to help us let's work through it in parts if it takes us 10 years let's make it right before we die Let's make it right. But fake family members who only call you when they need the money, who only call you when they want the loan, who only call you when they're in trouble and then go right back to their mud and right back to their, their, their vomit, as the scripture says, the dog to his vomit, the pig to her mud, you can't use that. And it's making you sick and it's making you angry and it's upsetting you and it's violating your code and it's violating your spirit. Let it go. Get rid of these seven things that I told you. God knows I could have given you 25 things you need to get rid of, but I wanted to keep it to seven simple things that I know affects us all, that I know infects us all and, 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 and brings us down and tears us down. You can't use it. Seven things that you got to start working on today. Journal about them. Think about them. Pray on them. Meditate on them. Be honest and earnest about doing something about these things. Grudges, fake friends, bad habits, anything toxic, exes, doubts, fake family members. Folks, that's my seven. That's your November masterclass. Let me end with this. The end of the year is always difficult. And for some of you, for some of you, the holidays are awful. You don't have family anymore. You've lost your family. Maybe your parents died when you were young. Maybe you're estranged from your family. Maybe they molested you, beat you, did you wrong, and you moved away and you left and you're off on your own. I don't know what your situation is, but I want you to know I understand. And I really understand. I'm not saying that. I'm telling you the truth. And I get it. And I know that it's hard. My family's fractured. My family's broken. We're not where we should be, particularly as a Christian family. I'm disappointed in what I see, sometimes from myself 
and from others who should know better. And it's because we haven't dealt with the pain, we haven't dealt with the hurt, we haven't dealt with the betrayals, we haven't dealt with what has hurt us, and then it erupts like a volcano, and we're angry, and we're pissed off, and we're bitter, and we're in pain, and we say the wrong things, and we do the wrong things. And that's not what it should be. So I want you to know I get it. But I want to encourage you if you will start unpacking to the best of your ability the garbage, the grudges, the fakeness, the bad habits, the toxicity, the ex this, the ex that, the what didn't go right, the who didn't do me right, the doubts, and family members who don't mean you good. Because we're related doesn't mean we're going to take care of each other and look out for each other, as we should. And you got to be okay with that. And you got to know where to put the wall up and draw the line to protect yourself from people who haven't gotten healing, who won't go to counseling, who won't talk it out, who won't come clean. You got to do it because it's not going to help you to deny and to lie and to pretend it doesn't work. I remember as a kid hating the holidays because every holiday my dad was going to drink, his family was going to drink, and they were going to be violent. And they were going to curse at each other, fight each other threaten each other, and menace each other. It was horrible. And it happened every single holiday. Easter, Christmas, Fourth of July, whatever it was, Thanksgiving, it was bad. And that's unfortunate. I don't want that for my life. And I don't want that for yours. You know, you can choose something different. You don't have to be like what your family was. As Pastor Charlie likes to say, what was doesn't have to always be. That's real. We make choices. We choose. Have enough courage and love and respect for yourself to choose a different course. Get rid of these seven things. Like I said, there are many more things you may need to get rid of, but if you will start with these things, it'll help make your 2019 a good year. I look forward to seeing you all in December. I'll be in touch by December 1st through the staff about what we're going to do in December as we wind the year down and what the master class will be, whether it will be live, but you'll still get a video regardless because you paid for that. And we're hoping for some amazing stuff in 2019. Woman Code conferences, all kind of good stuff. Woman Code 2.0 coming your way soon, ladies. Hopefully fall 2019. I'm working on it now. We're super excited about it. A lot of stuff in film and television that we can't wait to tell you about. We're excited. God is good. He's amazing. Everything may not be as I want it to be, but I know that I'm blessed. I hope you had an amazing holiday. Happy Thanksgiving again. Happy kickoff to the Christmas season. Pace yourself. Have some fun. Don't burn yourself out. Remember, it's not about the gifts. It's about the gift of you. I love you guys. God bless you now. Bye-bye.